say happy Sabbath, everybody. It is time for the word. Hopefully you have some tools, a King James Bible, a Bible app, and something to take some notes with. We are a Bible study class. We will be studying the Word of God. And above all, please have an open mind. There are a lot of doctrines out there, and you got to have an open mind. <laughs> The title of today's class is Present Thyself to God. Amen. And the reason for this lesson is because we don't got besides ourselves as being as respect to God. We feel that we can come to God any kind of way and stay that way. But we're going to get into the scriptures and we're going to show you that there's a way to present yourself to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pick this up at 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. We're going to start at verse 10 and we're going to begin to study the word of God. Amen. Go ahead, brother. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So good or bad, every man and woman must appear before God. The question is, what are you representing? Skip down to verse 14 through 17, and come on, let's read some more. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Read on. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them. So, and, go ahead. And rose again. So it's not about what you want to do. At the end of the day, we should all be trying to please Christ. Because he came to do it, clean us up. Amen. That's right. But read on. 16. Wherefore, his fault, no we no man after the flesh. Come on. Yet, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now his fault, we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Come on. All things are passed away. And what else? Behold, all things are become new. So Jesus came to clean you up and present you as a holy vessel unto God. A new creature. And we're going to show you that starting right now. Let's go to Romans the 6th chapter. Romans the 6th chapter. Romans the 6th chapter. Romans chapter 6, we're going to read verses 1 through verse 4. And we're going to do some skipping. Well, go ahead, brother. Let's go ahead and continue to read some more of the word. Go ahead. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Read on. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him that his baptism into his death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So after living a life of sin, baptism gives us a new chance to represent or present ourselves before God. Through Christ. Skip down to verse 12 through 13. Let's read on. 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Come on. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and 
your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So as Christians, our job is to show the world Christ. They're going to see Christ through you. That's right. Amen. Stop chasing after the world. Mm. Stop trying to get money. Amen. You'll spend your whole life trying to get money, and then when they take away that money, then what have you been doing your whole life? Amen. Skip down to verse 22 and 23, and come on and read some more. But now, being made free from sin, and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. So we obtain everlasting life when we walk in Christ. When we walk in the word of God. Now can we walk in Christ today? Or do we got to wait till Jesus comes back and start walking in Christ? Amen. We can start right now. Amen. Then we begin to change our actions. Your walk is going to begin to change because now you're walking in Christ. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians the fifth chapter. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Here we study the word of God. We go through the searches and you write them down. And when somebody asks you what did you learn at the class, you can give it to them. Amen. You don't have to give them a story about what I did during the week. I got a lot of stuff done in the week. And you got a lot of stuff done in the week. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Verses 14 through verse 23. And let's continue to read some more of the word. Go ahead, brother. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Correct those who do not have spiritual understanding. See, we don't do that no more. We so busy trying to be like the, the, the world, trying to be cool in here. When we was growing up, you got corrected in the word. Show them the way. Go ahead. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Boy, what do we have to be patient? Read on. 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. That's why when brothers come in and they're not doing the same thing that we're doing, we be patient with them. Why? Because you were there. Before at one time. Amen. Read on. 16. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Concerning you. Those are in Christ. Read on. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesies. Prove all things. Oh, you got to prove the word of God? You just can't open your mouth and say something? Sometimes we got these Bible thumpers. Well, we got uh, Lord, 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 the Center, and uh, Anderson, or something like that. That's what they say. He loved the Center, hate the sin. You say, read that to me. That sounds pretty. That, read that. That's, that's remarkable. Until you read the Word of God and you see that the Lord is not with the sin from anybody. Read on. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and whole body be present, be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So our goal should be to obtain everlasting life through who? Through Christ. Amen. Jesus will do it. He's going to take away them sins. Yes, he will. All right. Now, let's help correct those who do not know how to present themselves to God. That's why we're here. You come to learn how to obtain salvation. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. This word, it can't save you. Right now. Amen. It can stop you from doing something that you would otherwise do if you did not have the knowledge. So we're going to deal with the order of how we hold class here and how class should be held. And as we get go along this lesson, it's going to piss a lot of people off. And that's the goal for the day. To get you to straighten up. That's right. It affects your spirit. 
Go ahead, um, 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. We're going to pick this up at verse 26 through verse 33. And let's read. Brother, go ahead. How is it then, brethren, when you come together? Every one of you have a song, had a doctrine, had a tongue, had a revelation, had an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edify. So we all come to church to worship God. We all are learning. But one thing we have to acknowledge is everybody come through that door with a doctrine and a knowledge and a song they want to hear. Read on. 27. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, come on, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. So if we got somebody in here who's in Hispanic, you got a Hispanic in here, and then all of us speak English. There's no sense of me saying, come on, tell you all, all this stuff, because I don't have a way. Interpreter. Amen. That's what it's saying. Go ahead and read 28. But if there be no interpreter, if you ain't got no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Say it again. Let him keep silence in the church. Be quiet. Go ahead and read. And let him speak to himself uh -huh. and to God. And to God. Sometimes people get to a point where they can't get, they can't, there's no words. But God is understanding you. Amen. Amen. But we do things to edify. We don't speak lots of lady here. You just go off in a tangent and then somebody say, what are you saying? And then you look for somebody who's an interpreter and you get somebody up here who's going to say, Get you to quit your job and all that stuff. But we do things with understanding here. Go ahead and read. 29. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. So, you should not be trying to oppose the minister. You're doing an outburst, acting out, yelling, trying to take over. That ain't what the words say. The words say this. That's what it say. Read on. 30. If anything be revealed to another that says by, let the first hold his peace. Hold your peace. Get with the brother out of the class and say, hey, look, can we talk about something that you presented in the class? I would like to learn more about that. Go ahead. 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one. Prophesy by one by one. I'm doing that right now. Speaking forth the word of God. That's what it is. Go ahead. That all may learn. That's how we learn. If I get up here and start teaching, that brother start teaching at the same time, ain't nobody gonna get no understanding. It's called Amen. a debate. Wow. And a lot of people want to do that. Yeah, they do. Ain't gonna be no debaters in the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read. And all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. At the end of the day, when you hear this word of God, you should. Uh, uh, decrease and let the word of God increase. Read on. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So the church should be a safe and peaceful place. Yes, it Amen. should be. Because at the end of the day, there's no perfect church. That's right. We can never have too much prayer, too much song, too much rejoicing. And I'm going to say this. At the end of the day, you don't have to come here. My Lord Jesus. Think about it. Nobody's making you come here. Amen. We're here to receive the word of God, and we all try. Amen. I'm just Amen. another brother trying. You say, well, I don't like that, brother. We'll come to another brother church. Because <clears throat> at, at the end of the day, we're one big body of Christ. Amen. Until Christ comes set everything in order, we all are doing what we all are just trying. Amen? Amen. And we're going to do that in order, not in confusion. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, and we're going to begin to deal with these brothers. I know the sister's going to throw some stones, but we're going to deal with the brothers first. Deuteronomy, chapter 22. Deuteronomy, chapter 22. Brothers, buckle up. I'm talking to you. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and pick it up at verse 5. 
Go ahead and read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. It's a what? It's an abomination. We live in a time that if you even address this, you might lose your job. Yeah, that's true. Straight up. Today, it's proper for a man to wear pants and the women to wear dresses. Simply to put a difference. You get these people that say, well, what about the Irish? Are you Irish? No. The men should not be wearing dresses and heels. Cross-dressing. Then you get some of these brothers, they let the, the women wear pants. And then they get mad when they have somebody that's dealing with a, a spirit or something come in. If you don't have a problem, brother, with a sister, a sister wearing uh, 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 pants inside the sanctuary, you don't want to uh, uh, put a difference between, then why don't you wear a dress? Next Sabbath, and get up there and teach. There it is. Are oh, y'all understand what I'm saying? High definition. Now, we're not going to deal with um, outside the body of Christ when you go to work. Um, they have uh, uniforms when you go to job, but we're talking about the house of God. Amen. 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 We just want to put a difference. Men grow beards, put a difference. We don't do skinny jeans here. We ain't trying to see your no shape. <laughs> and the women go with their hair and do the nails. Why are we going over, over this? We need to. Because we don't get out of the way as a body of Christ. When we was growing up, we saw these things go on. Let's go to Esther 28 chapter. Because if we go, if I uh, somebody asks to use the restroom, and the sisters want to use the restroom, which restroom should she go to? We don't know. You don't know, do you? So we put a difference. So you know which one to go to. Amen? Amen. 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 Now if you want to have your wedding and have two tuxedos, that's on you. I'm telling you, the word of God say, put a difference. Amen? My goodness. Amen. My goodness. This ain't what I'm saying. This is what the word of God is saying. Let's go to Exodus, the 28th chapter. What we are, where we at? Exodus, the 28th chapter. And we're going to pick this up at verses 1 and 2. And we just try to get some more because we got the feast coming up. Exodus 28, verses 1 and 2. We're going to do some skipping. Go ahead and read, brother. And take thou unto thee. Aaron thy brother and his sons with them from among the children of Israel that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. We're talking about the servants of God. Those who operate in the body of Christ. Read on. Even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ethamar, Aaron's sons. Read on. And thou shalt make holy garments. Oh, so there are some holy garments? So we used to call those church clubs. You didn't wear what you wore the club club to church. No, church clothes with church clothes and everyday clothes with everyday clothes. Amen. But now the club clothes has become everyday clothes. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. No standard in the church anymore. Arm your garb is appropriate to God. Ask yourself that. Are you coming to a prom? Or are you coming to see God? I'm talking to the brothers. Skip down to verse 40 through 43 and come on and read. And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make goats, and thou shalt make for them girls and bonnets, shalt thou make for them for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with them, and shall anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. So they're going to put some church clothes on. They're going to look respectable. They're going to come to the Lord 
with respect. Go ahead and read 42. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness. Uh oh. Read that again with a power, bro. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness. So you can't, you cannot cook the feast. Y'all, forgive me for this. But me. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Jesus. Mercy, Lord. Lord. I remember talking to some, some people while I was, and it began to express how they could get in there and cook naked because Lord know he created the body. They could just come to him any kind of way. Oh, My goodness gracious, Jesus. And they had a little back and forth with that. Lord, so I'm going to read the word because the question was, show it to me the word. I'm reading it right now. Cover up your neck and oh, have some you. respect. Amen. Don't be in your lingerie trying to cook no feast. Amen. Let me get off there. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> From the loins even unto the thighs, uh -huh. they shall reach. That was the agony, brother. Go ahead. 43. And they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation. Read on. And when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place. That they may bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statue. So you mean the Lord will kill you if you have if you disrespect him like that? Mm -mm. We don't get out the way. Lord help us, Jesus. You got these people that uh, uh uh you got some people that are uh, uh I've seen have y'all seen where they wear the dress and they put the pants up under? Read on, bro. Finish that. It shall be a statue forever unto him and his seed after him. So no jersey or open shirts showing your chest hairs. You're coming to see God, not a sister. I remember some brothers, every time they came, it's Miami Vice. It's in Florida. <laughs> Walking around like this. Yeah, you see it, girl. You see it. And the brother won't say anything to him. Lord have mercy. No, bro. Straight yourself up. You ain't gotta have a suit and tie, but look respectable. That's right. Show some respect. We call it what dressing casual. Don't do bare minimum. Amen. 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 Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 44. Ezekiel chapter 44, because we see everybody walking around looking like this. And we should not be coming to the house of the Lord looking like that. Ezekiel chapter 44. Pick it up at verse 5. And we're going to look at dress code when the Lord get back. Now, if, if, if that was a dress code back then, and we're going to look at the dress code in the future, I think we can pretty much come to, we can reason together on what the dress code would be and should be today. Amen. 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 Pick it up at verse 5 and we're going to do some skipping. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. So we're talking about the church. Go ahead. And all the laws thereof, and mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. So Jesus is going to set this Levitical priesthood up again. Jesus is going to do it. Not these brothers that's, you know, that you see out here. Father claiming. Now I don't know how you're going to be part of the tribe of Judah and the tribe probably of Levi. But I'm going to leave that alone. Make up your mind. Skip out verse 15 and 16. Come on to read, brother. 15. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. So you're going to come and represent the people. Read on. 16. They shall enter into my sanctuary. And they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep 
my tongue. You're going to do what the Lord says. Skip down to 19 through verse 21. And let's read some more. And when they go forth unto the other court, even into the other court to the people, they shall put off their garments wherein they minister uh -huh. and lay them in the holy chambers. Come on. And they shall put on other garments. Oh, so you got to have it some church clothes. You know, you got your garments. You know, you got your Nike suits. You got your under armor. You got your, you, you got the, you know, your, your feet lines. You got all that stuff on. You're going to take off them clothes. And you're going put to put on some clothes that come and see the Lord. And that's what it's saying. And our definition, other garments. Read on. And they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. So you ain't going to look like everybody else. So how you appear before the Lord, brothers, it does matter. You should be looking like a servant of God. You're standing up in front of the class with a t-shirt that says, God forgives. And then we look at the back of it and say, I don't. <laughs> oh, that caught me off guard. <laughs> I think that'll be the problem. Oh, wow. <clears throat> or a t-shirt that says, Go and get it. And turn the back, got a stack of money, and say, I already got it. <laughs> Are y'all understand what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. Or you could just wear something <laughs> that wow. shows respect to God. That's right. Read on, brother. 20. Neither shall they shave their heads. Uh -huh. They will suffer the rocks to go wrong. So you can look like Lil Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get into it, bro. Because I had to come into understanding as well. Amen, bro. But we see so often that brothers come to the Word, you find out you're a Hebrew Israelite, and then now you don't want to take no bath, you don't want to get no haircut, you don't want to dress, you just, you just out there. Throw your fist up. No, keep your fist down. Just keep it down. I'm going in the day, y'all. I want to vex you so you can do better. Amen. Don't tell me you ain't got no money. You got some money. Read on, brother. They shall only pull their heads. You're going to get a haircut. Being unkempt does not equal identity. Growing locks does not equal power. Amen. Why are you going to, I'm, I'm going to be like Samson. <laughs> you look, go to the White House and lift that White House up and change some things, Samson. <laughs> you come around me, anybody will tell you, keep coming around me. I'll sit you in the chair and I'll do something that probably your mom and dad should do. I will cut your hair. You want to look presentable? That's right. Why? The word says it right. That's right. So we're going to keep by ourselves up. And I want y'all brothers to get some wives. And sometimes that's the quickest way. Look at me. Keep yourself up. He keep yourself up. I know he will do what? He's going to keep up. It's just that simple. Deuteronomy the 16th chapter. Amen. Deuteronomy the 16th chapter. Brother talking about my locks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to go put some shampoo in them locks. But I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> the 16th chapter. <laughs> Verse 16 and 17. And we're going to read a little more uh, of the word of God. Y'all all right? <laughs> y'all know I'm going to give the church. I'm going to give y'all some church today. Oh, you all right, brother? Oh, yeah. Right. Good. You know what I mean? 16, verse 16 and 17. Come on and read. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Eleven Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. How can we build the house of God if you will not support me? Sisters so do a good job. What about the brothers? 
You got a job? Put something in the bucket. Amen. The fact that you got a job, you got life every strength, you can breathe. Put something to help the ministry. And we have things that we need to do. So $5 ain't going to do. You can't get about $5 to go uh, uh, for a ride uh, up the street. Back in the day, tonight, you gave somebody $5, you say, appreciate it, bro. So you give somebody $5, they might kick you out their car. Say, <laughs> so he crazy. Just keep your money. And I'm not telling you what you should give to God. I'm just telling you when you got it, when you up, drop something in the bucket. Amen. Before you go out to the Dominican Republic and get your teeth straight, put something in that bucket. Amen. Make sure the doctor don't mess you up. Go ahead. Go ahead. 17. <laughs> 17. Every man shall give as he is able. Uh-huh. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he had given he thee. Some brothers never give. I always want you to listen to them. Hey, brother, what the words say about that? And they point of view. But you ain't even supporting the ministry. The Lord said that he will keep you if you obey his word. You should not be empty. <coughs> Give. Amen? Amen. I'm not telling you to give away your whole house. Give. Man is all about presenting the best version of yourself to God. Because as you go along, you're going to clean up. When we was growing up, you had to clean up your life before you did something in the church. Now we don't got to the point where you can come out the street and get behind the camera. You can come, come off the street and start baptizing people. Wow. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Wow. You can be a reader. No, we want you to, you know, come in, get settled. So we know that you're going to be here, and we're going to put you to work. Amen. We're going to give you so much work, you're going to say, man, I don't know if I can do it. Proverbs 7 chapter. Proverbs 7 chapter. So, brothers, I hope you got that. I know I vexed your spirit a little bit, but I love the whole body of Christ. So we're going to do some correcting today, right? It said what? Help those who are unruly. That's what it say. Proverbs, the 7 chapter. Pick it up in verses 1 through 5, and now the sister's going to get at me right now. Don't right. throw no stones up here, sis. My goodness gracious, Jesus. If I ain't talking to you, I'm not talking to you. Nah. I'm just going to leave life to live like that. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's pick it up, Proverbs, verses 1 through 5. You know, y'all got the sister say, well, you know, I ain't talking to you. But go ahead and read. Let's read. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Read on. Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of thine eye. So the law was to be in your heart. Go ahead. Bind them upon thy fingers. Uh huh. Write them upon the table of thine heart. You got how many fingers you got? Ten. Ten. Just count them with the commandments. I can throw that little spiritual nugget out there. Go ahead and read. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister. And call understanding thy kids' woman. Uh -huh. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. What type of woman? The strange woman. The strange woman. The women, not of God. Read on. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. She flattered you with her words. Skip down to verse 10 through 11. Read on. Okay. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. Women should not look like or dress like a what? A harlot. Go ahead, mercy. You got on fishnets. Oh. Coming to see God. You dress all the way up to us. We got to go cover you up. Go ahead, mercy. You got that look from somewhere. You ain't the first one with it. If you dress like that, the brothers are not concerned anymore. By the word, by the word, by the word. The word goes to the side. And we're going to give each other that look. You see that? And it don't matter if a brother married or not. He got eyes. 
So we don't want that to come up into the church. That's right. But read on. And subtle of heart. She is loud and She's stubborn. She's loud and stubborn. You can't tell me what to do. Go ahead and read. Her feet abide not in her house. Always in somebody else's house. Skip down to verse 25 through verse 27. And let's read on. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Don't give in to that. Go ahead. Go not astray in her paths. Uh-huh. For she had cast down many wounded. And what else? Yeah, many strong men had been slain by her. So, you can go to hell dealing with these type of sisters. Yes, you can. It's all about the appearance. We read book, right? That's right. Is she dressed like a harlot? She can't get out of it? When you marry her, Guess what she gonna be? Your heart. My goodness. She ain't really blue. Go ahead and read. 27. Her house is the way to hell. Read it again. Her house is the way to hell. Because you're gonna have all type of problems. Lord, have mercy. Brother's gonna be looking at your girl. And you can't tell her nothing. Because you won't stand up and be a man. Go ahead and read. Going down to the chambers of death. Fear of clothes do not equal equality or freedom. Brother, you can't tell me what to do or what to say. I'm not trying to. The word of God clearly is. That's right. And we here to serve God, right? Amen. Not to look at every sister that comes to the door. Because you got brothers don't even come to hear the word of God. They come to look at all of the sisters. So we're not asking you to uh, go above and beyond, but look presentable before the Lord. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Timothy, the second chapter. 1 Timothy, the second chapter. You say, brother, see, why are you getting on the sisters? Because we're supposed to have the older sisters dealing with this. 1 Timothy, the second chapter. Pick it up at verses 9 to 10, and let's read some more. Go ahead and read, brother. In like manner also, that women adore themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel. So it does matter how you present yourself to God. We're in the New Testament. Why are we telling people how to look, how to dress? Amen. Presentable clothing, looking like you're coming to see God, not a man. Go ahead and read. With shamefacedness uh -huh. and sobriety, not with burning hair or gold or pearls. No costly array? Is it saying that you can't wear no pearls, no gold, no costly array? No, it's not saying that. It's saying don't be all about that. Amen. Lord bless you with some money, you know, to look presentable before the Lord. Where? Amen. We want to see you looking nice and looking good. But don't let it just be all about that. That's what it's saying. Go ahead and read. Ten. But which becoming women professing godliness. Godliness. You got on 14 inch heels, fishnet, cleavage, uh, 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 I'm sure. I'm just make y'all laugh. You got something on you say, sex and red? And you come and ask me, brother, what's scripture? <laughs> One time, you say, I got them. I'm coming in. I'm going to eat them next week. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how it go. Oh, wow. Read on, brother. Go ahead. Amen. But what's becoming women professing godliness with good works? With good works. Did you finish that, brother? I did. Okay, so go look in the 50s and 60s, and you will see that the women did not dress the way they dress today, right? Today, it can be expensive. It can be very expensive to buy modest apparel. Amen, brother. I've been out with my wife, and we've been looking all day. Couldn't find a dress to go down below the knees. So, your sisters, when you find a place, share it. Please. 
If you're new, we ain't gonna say nothing to you, because we understand. But as time go along, guess what? You clean yourself up. But we're not gonna have uh, uh, 10 sisters sitting on the front row with no under undergarments on. <laughs> and wonder why the pastor cheat on his wife. He <laughs> is a man, right? Yes, sir. Yes, he is. How do you think these things happen? So it, can, it can be expensive, so we're going to try our best. Let's go to Ezekiel the 16th chapter. Y'all all right? Amen. Ezekiel the 16th chapter. And we just getting in the word, talking about presenting ourselves to God. Amen. Ezekiel the 16th chapter, pick it up in verses 1 and 2, and let's read some more. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. God is talking to his wife, Israel. Husband and wife should hold each other accountable. Before you walk out that door, babe, I'm good. You good. And vice versa. I'm good. You good. My Lord. Help each other out. That's right. Because when you come in that door looking some type of way, trust me, the sister say, I can't believe she let him <laughs> come to the church. With all that lint in his head. He got a purple shirt with yellow shoes. <laughs> and look at her. She got on a purple shirt with lime green. You can tell, obviously, it's not a way. You know, I don't want to go. That's right. So help each other out. Some people just don't know how to correlate like that. Get some good brothers and sisters and help them push themselves together. We want to give the Lord our best. Amen? Amen. Amen. But go ahead and read. Verse 10. I clothed thee also with broader work, uh -huh. and shod thee with badges and skins, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. Read on. I did thee also with ornaments, uh -huh. and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. That's why you get a sister, brother. Every now and then, take a shopper. Give her, give, you know, give her a bracelet, give her this, give her, give her, it's okay. She is your wife, right? That's right. If some sisters ain't got not one gift, after that, they cross that, they got that way. And you want the utmost respect. Come on, read. 12. And I put a jewel on thy forehead, mm -hmm. and earrings in thy ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. So God put earrings in the ear? Is that what it said? Because you get brothers that teach against earrings. It means you're a slave. Slave who? Go ahead and read, brother. 13. Thus was thou decked with gold, with gold and silver. Read on. And thy raiment was of fine linen uh -huh. and silk and brought work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil. And thou wast exceeding beautiful. And thou didst prosper into a kingdom. You couldn't touch the sisters back in the day. Go read other people's history book. They talked about how soft the sisters' feet were and skin and everything, how they looked just radiant. Sisters can put it together. We just ain't came together. That's right. Go ahead and read. 14. And thy renown, you were known, went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Y'all have changed the beauty for other nations. The brothers and the sisters. They copy in our food. Off of you. That's right. Go ahead and read. But it was perfect through my comeliness. Come on. Which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. So it sounds like the Lord wants you to look presentable Amen, brother. before Amen. him. He said that you was perfect. Everything ain't okay. Go ahead and read. 15. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. Oh, but you can trust in your own beauty and come look at however you want to look. Go ahead and read. And play this the harlot. You can play a harlot. My goodness. Go ahead. Because of thy renown, and poured out thy fornications 
on everyone that passed by. He as it was. You can choose. You can choose. You can choose to wear inappropriate clothing. Yes, you can. Some people wear inappropriate things that come to church and say, damn, I double dog damn oh, say yeah, something to me. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I'm going to give it to them. And if he say something to me, I got something in the car for him. I'm waiting for him. I don't like him anyway. Oh. Wow. It happens. But you have a choice. Because I know when it's your birthday, you go all out. I see some people that say they ain't even able. They ain't got nothing. I can't put it in the offer pan. I'm just struggling. Birthday come around. Look, yeah, I got you know I clean up nice, don't I? Don't just continue to clean up nice when you come see the Lord. That's all we ask. That's right. Trade that Nike shirt for something presentable. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 We want to go back to when we had common sense. Back in the day, we didn't uh, 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 we didn't have the money, but we looked like we had money. One thing our parents uh, taught us was what? Keep them clothes iron when you come to see the Lord. Let's go to 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter. We're going to move on. 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter. Your brother, getting on us. Yeah, I am getting on you because the feast time coming up and I don't want people being vexed. Now, all type of sin happened during the feast time. Yeah, it is. People going out in the back. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Easy access. Hey. I got people still telling stories right now about what went on during them times. Whoa. <laughs> so we going to deal with it. Show some respect. First Corinthians 11, chapter, picking up the verses 4 and 5. And we're going to do some skipping. Go ahead and read, brother. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. Read on. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered, uncovered, dishonored her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. That's why when brothers come in, we ask you to uncover your head. It's right here in the word. So, so we ask you to cover your head. It's right in the word. Now we got a lesson to even deal with that. Learn how to cover your head. Because some women don't even cover their head. You sitting there and we can see, we can see everything. Your head ain't covered. And soon as we say amen, you throw that thing off. As long as you're in the house of the Lord, you're going to be speaking the Lord's business. Cover your head. Amen. Brothers, take off your hat. You can't even go in the courtroom with a hat on. They ask you, please, sir, can you please remove your hat? Where did it come from? I'm reading it to you. That's right. You don't want Brother T up here with a black hoodie on, with a Nike hat, built to, uh, uh, pinned to the side, saying, all right, brother, go ahead and read. All right, come on, brother, read on. Verse 10. But this cause of the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. So the Lord commanded the woman not to wear, uh, the woman to wear a covering, not the man. Because of the what? Because of the angels. This goes all the way back to the beginning. Read on. 11. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Uh -huh. Neither the woman without the man. So stop I'm trying to split people up. Yeah, sister, let, you know, let's go over here and talk about what the brother said. And the brother said, let's talk about what the sister said. No, we ain't about that up here. Read on. In the Lord. But in the Lord. We are all servants of God. Just find out what you're supposed to be doing and let's get it done. We all belong to the body of Christ. But some people have not put on Christ. Let's go to Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Some people have simply have not put on Christ. Some people have not put on Christ. You don't know if we go into a hip hop concert or if we in church. Walmart sell a nice little shirt for 10 bucks. Go get one. Isaiah the fifth chapter, pick it up in verse 13 
and verse 14. And come on, let's read, brother. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Today we have no standards. People going to fight against dressing in modest apparel. That's what the word is saying, right? That's right. Yeah. So it's got to be something that's not modest apparel. What is that? We don't put no difference. Read on. And the honorable men are vanished, and the multitude dried up with thirst. Did you get to the point you feel like, you know what, these people ain't listening, man. I ain't gonna tell them. Read on. Therefore, hell have enlarged herself. Come on. And opened her mouth without measure. And their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. So it took me the word, bro. So why I can't do this, and why I can't do that. You don't have no spiritual understanding. We should have to talk to each other about coming, looking respectable uh, uh, um, uh, to God. Read on. 20. Woe unto them that call evil good uh -huh. and good evil. That look good on you, girl. Ooh. Instead of you saying, Sis, I got a couple dresses that I'd like to give to you. <laughs> oh, bro, you doing it, bro? <laughs> you sitting there with a Kobe Bryant jersey on, tattoos everywhere, yeah. skinny jeans on with some Afro horns. Oh, boy. Boy. He can leave the church and go straight into the club. Yes, he can. Put no difference. Go ahead. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet mm -hmm. and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them. Woe unto them. That are wise in their own eyes Come on. and put it in their own sight. You can't tell me how to dress. See, brother, I don't feel comfortable in a dress. I don't feel comfortable wearing a collar shirt. You're not supposed to feel comfortable. That's right. We're trying to clean you up in Christ. You want to be comfortable and not change. We want you to change. Read on. 22. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire divides the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness. Because you're growing up in your root, you don't got no root. You're insubordinate, disobedient. Go ahead and read. And their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts. You put the word of God to the side. Later with the modest appearance. I look fine. Read on. And despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. The Lord told you to cover up your nakedness. You don't want to do that. You want to sack your pants and you want to just come to God any kind of way. I'm telling you to straighten yourself up. We all been there. Nobody's better than the next man. Let's go to Romans the seventh chapter. Romans the seventh chapter. Romans the seventh chapter. And we're going to read verses 14 through 18. And we're going to do some skipping. We're going to continue to get in the word of God. Come on to read, brother. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. Go ahead. But I am carnal, sold the sin. Our flesh is sinful. But we understand obeying the word of God, it can change your life. Yes, it can. Read on. 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. In other words, it's something that you would like to do. But you ain't going to do them because the word of God tell you not to do them. Amen. Read on. 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Come on. Now, 
then it is no more that I do it. Come on. But sin that do it than me. Put them thoughts in your mind telling you go mess with all the sisters in the church. But you don't do that because the what? The word of God tells you not to do it. That's right. And you start to understand and then not you don't want to do it. Amen. Because it's wrong. Go ahead and read 18. But I know that in me. That is, go ahead. That is in my flesh. In this flesh. There is no good thing. There ain't no good thing. You're always thinking about something bad to do. Amen. Go ahead and read. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I'm still looking how to improve. Skip down to verse 24 to verse 25 and read some more of this good word. Oh, wretched man that I am, uh -huh. who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Read on. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. And we thank God. That we are changing for the better. Amen. Not doing whatever you feel like doing. That's right. Let's get back to, you know, back in the day, uh, we, used to, we used to have our clothes uh, dry clean. <laughs> Looking like something. Now, good luck, that, good luck with that with the, uh, the youth. They just put it on and go. Do not come up here with your flip flops. Show some respect. Let's go to Titus, the second chapter. Titus, the second chapter. Y'all all right? Amen. We're just getting in this word. Titus, the second chapter. We're going to pick this up at verses 1 through verse 8. And then we're going to do some skipping. 1 through verse 3, brother. 1 through verse 3, and we're going to do some skipping. But go ahead, brother. But speak down the things which become sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Read on. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and in charity, in patience. Hold on. Read that first part of it again. That the aged men be sober. Intoxicate. Sober. High. Sober. Drunk. Sober. I just want to make sure you get that. Read on. Verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior, as becoming holiness. Come on. Not false accusers. Gossip. Go ahead. But uh, not giving too much wine. Teachers of good things. So it didn't say that the sisters can't drink no wine. It says not giving to what? Much wine. Yeah, some sisters, they known for drinking. My Lord. My Lord. It's the older man's job to teach the younger men how to act. Teaching them good things. Don't teach them how to gang bang. Don't teach them how to cheat on, 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 on their wife. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Teach them how to serve God. Amen. Amen. The women, don't teach them how to, you know, stand up to their husband and put him in place. <laughs> <clears throat> teach them how to deal with the body of Christ and what? In love. Amen. Amen. Read on, brother. Verse 6. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. Sober-minded. Not high all the time. You got some people, they smoke before they come to the class. Wow. I just really understand the word even more when I get, you know, when I got to give me a little sub sound. <laughs> you sit there and want to get into a deep conversation when your mind is, is all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Come on with me, bro. Seven. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Come on. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. You're teaching that word. Go ahead. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. And that's why people come. But we don't have people that come over here and say, and they came looking like they just came off a work truck. Lord have mercy. They say, brother, is it okay if I come in? Yeah, come in. Get your behind in here. Because now you feel ashamed. Because you see that way. We coming to present ourselves before God. Amen. And we try. Amen. 
And then you want to tell me, I declare, well, you know, I, I, I dressed up back in the day and I got some clothes. Who's stopping you? Nobody's stopping you from presenting yourself to God. Looking like something. Amen. They ain't going to kick you out of the church because you got on a nice shirt and a tie. I'll kick you out of the church because you ain't got on a tie. Just look like you come to see God. It's simple. Finish that, brother. Verse 12. Teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Become ambassadors. I'm talking to um, the older sisters and brothers. You should be an ambassador by now. You done been in the world 20, 40 years. And you got a problem with uh, 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 the dressing of the head covering or putting on the hat. It's beneath you to wear uh, uh, a decent shirt. You can't even put on a little nice little polo. You want to fight to the church. And you've been a little how long? You should be a staple. That's right. You come in, brothers come in, they don't know what to do. Guess what? They're going to look at you. And you tell them, hey, man, you know, you've been coming here, you know, two, three times, this, that, and the other. Man, man I got a closet full of, full of shirts, man. I can get you. Can I get you? Do you mind what size you wear? You mind if I give you 10 shirts, brother? Sure. My Lord. Help somebody. That's right. Yeah. Everybody ain't got it like that. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians, the third chapter. We get that, y'all. We just talking about presenting yourself to God. Y'all know y'all got them uh, goodwill shoppers. Go get you a whole wardrobe for two dollars. <laughs> Shirts now thirty cents, brand new. It ain't good when they like you how it used to be. No. You go in there with something that's warm, they they look at you like you crazy. Them shirts in there look brand new, and they name brand. Whole suits, Versace, Polo. Let's read all Colossians. <laughs> Colossians, the third chapter, verses one through eight. Look, we the the all the way back. We in the last day. You ain't got no excuse. Get you tonight, well, I'm my shoe. Yeah. Look like some joints. <laughs> or go to Ross. Yeah. The same shoe that makes it, they at Ross. Yeah. Cheap. That's right. Cheap. So I don't want to hear it. Colossians verses 1, one through verse 8. Come on and read, brother. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Read on. Set your affection on things above. Not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, who is our life? Christ. Go ahead. Shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So we must all we all must appear before Christ. Amen. Question is what? Will Christ see? Will he say a servant or a heart? Will he say a man of God or a pimp or a player? You choose. Go ahead and read. Five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things is say, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You don't want to be obedient. Read on. In the which he also walked some time when he lived in them. So, you know, if you knew a brother like me back in the day, I ain't playing around with it. I'm going to have the, the, whatever just came out. I want them. George, how about they call say something? Man, go get them things out the back. I'm going to get the shoes, the shirt, the hat, everything with it. But when you come into and the Lord begins to give you spiritual understanding, you understand that all that stuff is going to do what it's going to burn up and go away. Amen. Right? Amen. I ain't got no problem going into Walmart. And I be in there looking. 
why that thing so high? It cost ten dollars. They get it. They say clear six ninety nine. There you go. Right. Y'all say, brother, take us a expensive shirt. <laughs> like you just don't know. We just trying to do better. We understand that these material things will pass away. Amen. Amen. We try to clean up this mind. Read on, brother. Eight. But now he also put off all these. Come on. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. And we got all work on that, right? Amen. That's right. Amen. We want to get you off your game. But if the mind is right, then guess what? You're going to start. The, the olive appearance is going to start to show that spirit to understand. Amen. 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 Read on. 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Don't tell me you've been in the word 10 years and you got a, you wearing fish nets. So all that we've been teaching this word and, the, and, and the, the, what you've been getting from this is to pull the, the skirt up. It don't seem like the skirt going down over the years. It seems like it, it going up over the years. Wow. Other brother, you come in. I see some brothers come in and they are dressed nice. Then they conform. And next thing you know, they got a shirt open. Look at it any type of way. Zia, gone. Go ahead and read. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. See, because we want you to sing from the Lord. We can't handle you singing from the Lord. And you moving, sister. And every time you move, the Lord is just like this. Looking for every, every little each. Wow. I've seen it. Read on. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. To the Lord. Read on. Verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. So good or bad. Everyone will present themselves before God. Amen. You better believe. You cannot, or you will not, be walking around the kingdom looking any kind of way. Just think about that. We all are destined to appear before God. Let's go to Job, the second chapter. We're going to pick this up in verses 1 through verse 10. And we're going to continue on with this lesson. Job, the second chapter, verses 1 through verse 10. Job 2, verses 1 through verse 10. And come on, let's read some more of the word. Go ahead. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So everybody must appear before God. All right now, all right now. Even the angels had... They got to do what? Report to God. That's the word. Read on. Two. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Read on. And the Lord said unto Satan, As I consider my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that bears God and is sure evil. And he and still he holds fast his integrity. So the Lord looking at you. And you got Satan doing what? Walking around trying to get into something. You got, so you got some people don't have no goals in life. They're just walking around trying to get into something. They be in the church too. Go around messing with everybody. Getting on people nerves. Read on. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Oh, so Satan will come against you? Because he wants you to get these garments, this blush. He wants you to get them dirty. He wants you to sin against God. Read on. For, and Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Skin for skin. Yeah. All that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now 
and touch the bone and his flesh. I just want you to understand, maybe you are living according to the word of God. And something may happen to you. See what you're going to do. Go ahead and read. And he will curse thee to thy face. And then he going to curse you to, the face, to, to your face. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Don't touch his life. Read on. So when Satan flew from the presence of the Lord and smoke joy with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his ground. Read on. Read on. And he took him a punter to scrape himself with all. That had to be bad. He, he had to scrape himself. Oh. He went real bad. Go ahead and read. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him. Oh, Satan came through the way. Came through, through the wife. Read on. Does thou still retain thy integrity? Read on. Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. Read on. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Well, so you're going to have some good time and some bad time if you're going to be in Christ. Yeah. It's going to build you. Read on. In all this, did not Job sin with his lips. So Satan wants, he wants your garbage to do what? To get filthy. But Job, he did not sin against God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Sometimes you just got to press your way. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Pick this up in verses 1 through verse 5. And then we're going to skip down to verse 9 through verse 12. But let's read some more of the word. We see that even the angels got to present themselves before God. Amen. Go ahead and read. Did any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints are just the world? Some people present themselves to the government. You'd rather go to the law and get all nice. But you should be able to do it and work it out amongst your brother. Go ahead and read. And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? In other words, how can you judge the wicked angels? You know you're going to judge the angels, right? Then you also live in darkness like the angels? Can Satan cast out Satan? Teach your brother. You sit up there looking at, looking at an angel and telling me, you know, oh yeah, let's, let's see what you did. And the angel looking at you like, you were down with me, what you talking about? You were right down. <laughs> you were the main one, I was, you know, we do, to do this and do that. Wow. Go ahead and read. Three. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Come on. How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? In other words, you should be able to work some things out with just, you know, somebody who least esteemed. Somebody who ain't got nothing to do with the situation, you know, a brother that come to class just standing together and you ask him a simple question. Hey, brother, we was in there, you know, we're trying to reason together. What day should we be coming to class? Is it the first day or the seventh day? They're like, well, brother, according to the word of God, it's the seventh day. Thank you, bro. And the concludes of the matter, that's it. Read on. No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. Verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Read on. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. We're talking about your presentation. The Lord, read on. And such were some of you. Come on. But ye were washed. Be washed. But ye are sanctified. Oh, so you mean this word is cleaning you up now? Amen. 
I'm, I'm doing two lessons at once, if you understand what I'm saying. We got to be cleaned up. By the word, read on. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Amen. Read on, bro. All things are lawful unto me. In this country, you can do whatever you want to do. You can eat pork. You can go sleep with whoever you want to. You can do You can sin. Mm -hmm. That's what it's saying. Go ahead and read. But all things are not expedient. But everything is just ain't for you. Why? You are a servant of God. That's right. You're supposed to be living, uh, have a righteous life. So you can be set apart and accounted among the holy. Go ahead and read. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. You can't be a weed head. Uh-oh. Some people can't do anything without getting a drink. Oh, smoking a cigarette. Having that black of mine. I'm getting that weed. I remember telling somebody sometime, if you find yourself in a circle with the unbelievers and y'all passing that thing, that sticky icky, and the only thing y'all got in cup <laughs> is the sticky icky. <laughs> it got power over you. Oh, man. Just know that. And some people don't even want to go, to, Ooh, I'm glad you just said verbatim. Because if it said that you cannot get into the kingdom of God without the weed, man, people be like, man, you don't even want to go to the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. But the servants of God know that these things are unlawful unto God. You cannot, should not have anything um, overtaking you. Let me put it that way. Go ahead, bro. Let's read, um, uh, let's go to Hebrews. The 10th chapter. You finished that? I did. Let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, chapter 10. We're going to pick this up at verse 22 to verse 25. We're getting there, y'all. We're just studying this word of God. Studying the word. But Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 22. Go ahead. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. So all have sinned against God. We all need to be washed with that, that pure water. Yes, that is what? That's the word. We get washed right now. But read on. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without waver. Uh -huh. For he is faithful that promised. Read on. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, uh -huh. as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see that they approach. So, how can you be a believer if you will not present yourself? That's why we gather together on the Sabbath day. We are presenting ourselves before whom? Unto, unto the Lord. That's right. Amen. You got some people, they refuse to present themselves. I'm going to stay at home and watch what? Online. Lord have mercy. The Lord cut the internet out. You've been online for 10 years. Ain't nothing stopping you from presenting yourself. You are just doing your own thing. Why? Wow, we need people in the body of Christ. We all need support and help. Amen. Well, let's read these notes, brother. Go ahead and read. Notes on coming to church. Why should the servants of God get the same reward as the unbeliever? Why should you get the same reward when you don't come up? Okay. You know, you're taking your vacations, you're working your uh, 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 extended overtime, you're doing all that. Don't you? Uh, this brother wants some money. You know, you come up, you you drive up. You know, after you take your nice time off. And the door closed. You're like, bro, see where you at? I'm like, bro, I want the vacation too. Mm. I, you know, I had to go get some extra coins too. My goodness, brother. No, if I gotta be present, guess what? You gotta be present too. But read on, brother. Go ahead. Many people commit to doing other things on the Sabbath. You always wanna put something before God. Go ahead. 
Mandatory overtime. Now, you check me out with these people with, with the mandatory overtime. You go to their job, and we, we, you know, you ask them, is it mandatory? Well, if this person going to lose their job if they don't work overtime. They're like, no. Nah, they signed up for it. Wow. I can remember people telling me, oh, brother, I got the Sabbath all oh, I'm going to be coming. And then that time go along, they see that paycheck and see what could it be. And they say, bro, I can't, I, I can't, I, I, I got to. And then I just wait on it. My Lord, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Seven months later, bro, I love my job. Lord have mercy. Pray for me. Go get another job. Come to class. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Bro, I love my job. I'm just trying to figure out something. If you broke disobeying God, come on now. Why don't you be broke obeying God? Amen. Amen. How are me and you in the same situation? You working all the overtime. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure that out. It don't make no sense. No, it don't. It's not like you're gonna uh, uh, get a mansion for uh, uh, for, uh, for some of these people. These people are always gonna have work for you to do. But go ahead and read, brother. Birthday. Birthday. I can't call, you know, I had a birthday party. Go ahead. Wedding. You know, my cousin got a wedding and you know, I, I gotta be that favorite cousin. Go ahead. You up, oh, somebody died. Somebody's gonna be on all time. Guess what day it's gonna be on? It's gonna be on Saturday. Let me go ahead and ease your mind. You got the pen. Now the Lord had told somebody who was bearing their father. Let the dead bury the dead. My Jesus. What does that say for us? All you can hope for is to tell people, y'all know, you know, I served on the Saturday and everything and whatnot, and you know, I can't be there. But as you go along, people just people drop off like what? They just drop off and get pretty much you might as well just stay at the funeral home. <laughs> hey, I sat at the funeral home. Why? We serve the God of the living. When he come back on the Sabbath, the God of the living. But go ahead and read. Rainy days. Oh, it rain. Half of y'all didn't come today because it rained. Looked out there, it was pulling down and everything. You said, uh, well, that traffic going to be bad. <laughs> read on. Summer day. Oh, uh, it's hot. It's too hot out there. Well, hot. 85? Yeah, nah, I'm going to hold it on in today. <laughs> you online, bro, T? Um, go ahead and read. Winter day is cold. Go ahead and read. Or you just need a vacation. I need a vacation, man. You know, I need, you know. Go ahead. Or a personal day. I need a day to get myself together. He said, oh, we got to be on a Sabbath day, though. You could take Wednesday, you know. You got to be on the Lord's day. Go ahead. To reflect on the Sabbath day. Go ahead. These are some of the reasons why some people will end up in eternal damnation. You're going to end up in that lake of fire. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Doing your own thing. Now, I'm not saying this to condemn nobody. I'm just telling you, we all have been there. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you to do what? Clean yourself up. Get some understanding. Amen. When Jesus comes back, you can't tell Jesus. What you doing? You know, I need a personal day. <laughs> Man, until overtime. Oh, Brother T. No. Y'all saw what happened to the brother that picked up sticks, right? <laughs> I just think, I, I, I thank the Lord for grace. Because I don't think nobody will survive. But as you grow along in Christ, you begin to clean yourself up. We all must present ourselves on the Sabbath day. Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter. Lord. Philippians, the third chapter. Y'all all right? Amen. I ain't going to worry about it, are you? I said I'm going to vex y'all today. I'm vexing myself as I vex you. Philippians, the third chapter, pick it up in verses 16 through 19, and we're going to read some more. Go ahead. Nevertheless, where do we have already attained? Let us walk by the same rule. If I got to keep the Sabbath, guess what? You got to keep the Sabbath. Amen. Amen same rule. No respect to person. If I got to show up, you got to show up. Go ahead and read. Let us mind. The same thing. Come on. Brethren, be ye followers together of me and mark them 
which walk so as ye have us for an example. So you should know those who are in the body of Christ. Go ahead and read. For many walk, although I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping. Come on. That they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. You gotta watch those. Those people come in, you know they're gonna bust that lake wide open. Sad. Lord have mercy. Sad. Some people don't care about salvation. Your mind should be on Christ, not yourself. That's right. Read on, brother. 19. Whose end is destruction. Come on. Whose God is their belly. All you worry about is sleeping with the sisters. Oh, boy. Read on. And whose glory is in their shame. Come on. Who mind earthly things. You worry about everything that's going to pass away on this earth. The question we're going to ask ourselves, are you ready to appear before God? Right there. The Lord, come back right now. You ready? Lord, have mercy. Now, hold on. Hold on a little bit. I got to get some things together. Me too. Let's go to Psalms 82. And we're going to read verses 1 through verse 7. Psalms 82, verses 1 through verse 7. Now we're talking about how this word, how Christ is going to clean you up. Just can't do what you want to do. But go ahead and read that, brother. Verse 1. A psalm of a Seth. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. Oh, you didn't know that eventually you're going to become just like the creator? Luchi. Amen. He judges amongst the what? Amongst the gods. The final state of humanity. Read on. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Say, Law. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. You should be trying to help deliver people. Read on. They know not. They know not. Neither will they understand. Come on. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. They're out of course. Why? Wow, because everybody doing whatever they want to do. Read on. I have said, uh -huh. ye are gods. That's what the Lord said. And all of you are the children of the Most High. But what's going to happen? But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So if you act like Satan the devil and want to do your own thing, you're going to end up like him. At the end of the day, the Lord will present us unto the Father. Let's go to Genesis, the third chapter. We got a couple more. We almost done. Genesis, the third chapter. Genesis, the third chapter. We all must appear before God. Amen. Genesis, the third chapter. Genesis 3. Pick it up in verses 1 through verse 10. And let's read some more. Come on, brother. Now the serpent was more subtle than any piece of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So this is the story of Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. But read on. Let's read some more. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. But God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Come on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together. So Adam and Eve, they sinned against God, and they began to try to clothe themselves. Did you go ahead? And made themselves aprons. So you could try to do things your way, which could be to the total, what, the wrong way. Did you Read on. Eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord God uh -huh. walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Come on. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? See, because we all must appear before God. Where are 
are you? Good or bad? They had to call before God. Read on. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. Uh -huh. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. That's like the people that's in the grave. They're going to hear the voice of the Lord and they're going to come out them graves. But you can't hide yourself. You're stuck in that scene. Skip down to verse 21 through verse 24 and let's read some more. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin. Oh, so the Lord called, uh, he, he clothed them with the appropriate garments. Suitable garments. Go ahead and read. And clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. That brought the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims. And the flaming sword was turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So we see that at the end of the day, there's a way that we must appear before God. First Corinthians, the, uh, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. We have dealt with the flesh now. We are dealing with the spiritual. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. I want you to pick this up, brother. Um, pick it up at verse 39. Pick it up at verse 39. And come on and read that. All flesh is not the same flesh. Come on. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There are different type of bodies. You got everlasting bodies. You got the body of the flesh. Go read on, brother. Verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Come on. It is so incorruption. Today we have mortal bodies that die. Simple flesh, dirty garments, dirty clothes. Go ahead and read. It is raised in incorruption. Come on. It is so in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Uh -huh. It is sown in natural body. So a natural body. It is raised in spiritual body. But you're going to be clothed with that spiritual body. Lord Jesus, Go ahead and read. There is a natural body. There's a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. There's a spiritual body. My Lord. You got to know that. Skip down to verse 50 and 51. And come on, let's read that. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot. It flesh is and blood can not go ahead. inherit the kingdom of God. You can't go to the kingdom that way. Read on. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. It's a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Everybody is going to be changed. My Lord. You're going to live forever. But where are you going? Are you going to that lake of fire? Or are you going to inherit everlasting life with Christ? Teacher, brother. We all have to be clothed with the garments of salvation. We want the garments of salvation. Let's go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, and we got a few more after this. John chapter 20, and we're going to read something about Christ. John chapter 20 and verse 1. And let's go ahead and read about Christ. Go ahead. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and see the stone taken away from the sepulchre. So this is after the resurrection. Mary, she's coming looking for Christ. My Lord Jesus. His flesh is dead. Corruption. Skip down to verse 9 to verse 17 and pick the story back up. Go ahead. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Read on. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. 
But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and she wept. She stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and seen the two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Read on. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, my Lord. and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. So Jesus is our example. We all must rise again without sin. We all got to put on immortality. Read on. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why are you weeping? Go ahead. Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be a gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have brought him hence, Tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. My Lord. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni. She knows Jesus. Go ahead. Which is to say, Master. Come on. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. Touch me not. Mary could not touch Jesus. Go ahead. For I am not yet ascended to my father. Come on. But go to my brethren. And say unto them, I ascend unto my father uh -huh. and your father, come on, and to my God and your God. See, even Jesus had to do what? He had to present himself Amen. unto the Father. Amen. Amen. Without sin. Amen. Jesus is getting us ready to be presented to the Father. Let's go to Zechariah the third chapter. My Lord. Zechariah the third chapter. We can now, y'all. Y'all want a lot of them jokes. I should have. Cut the jokes and stick to the scriptures, but y'all want them jokes in there. Hebrews. Hebrews, the ninth, uh, the ninth chapter. Hebrews. Hebrews 9, verse 24 through verse 28. And let's read some more of the word of God, brother. Go ahead. But Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, uh -huh. which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. So Mary could not touch Jesus because he had to appear before the Father without sin for us. Go ahead and read. 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the most holy, into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered once since the foundation of the world. From the foundation of the world, from Adam to the resurrection, to the kingdom of God. We all need what? New garments, new bodies without sin. Read on. But now, once in the end of the world, had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Of himself. Read on. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Did the judgment. Read on. So Christ is once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So we all are born in sin, but in Christ we will be born in righteousness without sin. Jesus getting us ready for the kingdom. Let's look at an example in Zechariah of how um, Satan the devil is trying to get you to have a holy garment. Zechariah, the third chapter. Zechariah, the third chapter, pick it up in verses 1 through verse 8, and let's come on and read some more of the word of God. Go ahead. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. So we got Joshua, the high priest, not Joshua from the book of Exodus. And Joshua is being challenged. And you got to say it right there, saying you did this, you did that. Go ahead and read. Two. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee. Come on. Oh, Satan, even the Lord that had chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Read on. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Come on. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Joshua had sin on him. Filthy garments. We all got sin on us. Read on. And stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Amen. 
and unto him he said. So the Lord told him to do what? Take away that flesh. Go ahead. Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from me. All the way to get that iniquity to pass from you is what? You got to put on them new garments. Amen. Amen. You got to put on that spiritual body. Amen? Amen. Amen. Read on. Hallelujah. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Now, is he talking about something you can go get at the thrift store? Negative. Something you can go get from Macy's? A JC pen? Negative. No, he is talking about something more important. Go ahead and read, brother. Five. And I said, let them set a fair meter upon his head. Come on. So they set a fair meter upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And everybody looked at him. Looked at him. Looking like a servant of God. Read on. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua. How can you do that? How you know? Read on. Read on. Say, thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou wilt walk in my ways. Come on. If thou wilt keep my charge. And what else? Then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, o Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wandered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. So Jesus will give Joshua our righteous garments. Immortality in the first resurrection. Amen. Amen. We just read it, right? Amen. Yes, sir. Let's go to Jude, the first chapter. A couple more. We done. Jude, the first chapter. Jude, the first chapter. Only one book before Revelations. Jude. Jude, chapter one. Got that book. It's hard to find. That's why y'all got the maps on y'all phone. Woo! Jude, right there. All right. Jude, the first chapter. Verse 18 through verse 25. Let's come on. Let's talk about this flesh. Go ahead, brother. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Come on. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. In the last day, we got see we got people that doing what? Going their own way. Nobody is seeking God. Read on. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual, having not the spirit. They are always talking about everything else but the word of God. Go ahead and read. But ye, the love, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. What else? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Read on. Keeping yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And that's what we do. We looking for that mercy. But we ain't looking, you know, like scared. We know what's coming. Amen. Cause we walking in the word. When you're walking right, you begin to hate the things you have done against God in the flesh. No, I do. Go ahead and read, brother. And of some having compassion. Come on. Making a difference. You can make a difference. Read on. And others saying with fear. Come on. Pulling them out of the fire. Read on. Hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. By the flesh. You mean you can help save somebody today? You ain't got to wait till the Lord come back? No, that's why we always tell you. Tell somebody about the good word and bring them in so they can stop sinning against God as well. Read on. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling uh -huh. and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Who is able to keep us from falling? Jesus, the Son of God, who is the Savior of the whole world. Amen. Read on. To the only wise God, yes, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Will you receive these righteous garments when Christ returns? We're going to find out what happened if you want to uh, 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 try to speak up in there. Matthew 22. Two more after this. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. You know, you got them brothers that you know, they want, they like for people to do all the work and then at the end they want to come and take your woe. A lot of brothers out there doing that right now. No bueno. They don't want to study the word. They want to come and ear hustle and then get up there and teach something that you've been doing all the study. Lord have mercy, Jesus. 
That's a big thing going on in Israel right now. All we want to be say, I taught it first. You ask them a direct question about something, they don't know. They just hear us. Matthew chapter 22. Pick it up at verses 1 through verse 14. And let's see what's going to happen with these brothers that think that you could just get in the kingdom of God any kind of way. Go ahead, brother. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, Jesus is going to give them an example of the kingdom of God. Go ahead. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding that they would not come. Come on. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready. They come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. Come on. And went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. You always got something to do. Go ahead. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Go ahead. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. These are the sinners. People who claim to be of God but have not changed. Go ahead and read. Then said he to his servants, What did he say? The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highway. To the highway. And as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. That's the word spreading out throughout the world. Go ahead. So those servants went out into the highways. Teach the gospel. Read on. And gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. That's why we teach salvation through Jesus. Go ahead and read. 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, then when Christ came back to the earth, go ahead. He saw their men which had not on a wedding garment. You want to do what you want to do. You want to wear what you want to wear. Read on. Yikes. And he said unto him, Friend, how came us thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? What you doing? Go ahead. And he was speechless. He ain't had to be saved. You know you ain't been serving God the right way. Go ahead and read. Then said the king to his servants, Bind him hand and foot. Come on. Take him away. And cast him into outer darkness. You go into outer darkness. Go ahead. Then shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's the leg of fire. But many are gone, but few are chosen. Everybody has a chance to receive salvation. Oh, Amen. A new clean body. Spiritual body. Y'all got that? Amen. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and we got one more after this, I think. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Pick it up at verses 1 through verse 6, and we're going to skip down to verse 14. We're on the wind up on this lesson. Go ahead and read, brother. Therefore, see, we have this ministry. Come on. As we have received mercy, we faint not. We faint not. Read on. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Come on. Not walking in craftiness. Uh -huh. Not handling the word of God deceitfully. Come on. But by manifestation of the truth. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We are teaching the word of God. We understand that we represent Christ. Amen. So we're just trying to help you receive some salvation. Read on. But if our gospel be hid, if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It is hid because those are what? To those that are lost. Those who don't want to come into the knowledge of the truth. Read on. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Saying the devil. Go ahead. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Read on. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ, Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants for Jesus' sake. So you shall be teaching about yourself. You got ministers spending all the time teaching about themselves. No, just teach the book. Go ahead, finish that, brother. Six. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. So let your shine. Your, your light got to do it. Your light has to shine before me. Read on. To give the light 
of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So we should see the light through you. Sometimes you be in a situation and you want to say something, guess what? You can't say that. Why? Because people are looking for you to, they looking for you. Let them see Christ. You know, you got some people, they'll smack you and say, what would Jesus do? Painful. <laughs> Go see what Paul would have did to you. Go see what David would have did to you. And you're going to find out what Jesus going to do to you too. It's well. Skip down to verse 14 and come on, let's read. 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. So it does matter how you present yourself. Why? We represent the light. We represent Christ. Now the, uh, um, the word of God says that Satan himself has transformed himself into what? The angel of light. Amen? Amen. So why do we have the false prophets that dress Better than the service of God. Houston, we got a problem. Yeah, we do. We got to wake up. Stop dressing like sinners. Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians, the third chapter. Because your neighbors are watching you. They know you serve God. Philippians 3. Pick it up at verses 1 through verse 3. And then we're going to end this off in the book of Revelations. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 1 through verse 3, and let's read some more. Go ahead, brother. Finally, my brother, uh -huh. rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, uh -huh. to me indeed, is not grievous. But for you, it is safe. It is safe. Read on. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision. For we are the circumcision Come on. which worship God in the spirit. In the spirit. And rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Do you walk in the spirit or are you out there trying to prove you're an Israelite? According to the flesh. How about just being a child of God? Amen. Amen. What's wrong with that? We have no confidence in what? In the flesh. Skip down to verse 14 and come on, let's read. I press. Toward the mark. Yes, Paul talking. He prays toward the mark. Go ahead. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 20. But our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our foul body. Come on. That it may be best like unto his glorious body. So Jesus is getting us ready to receive our new garments. We're talking about the spiritual body. My Lord. Continue to press forward towards the mark. Eternal life with Christ. Read on, brother. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. To himself. Revelation, the third chapter. Last chapter of today. You made it. Amen. Hopefully you understand. Great. It does matter. How you present yourself to the Lord. You come in, you should have a certain level of shame on you. Knowing you got to clean yourself up, and you're going to get better as time goes along. Amen. And then you're going to feel good about serving the Lord. Then you become what? Confident in serving the Lord. Then you become an ambassador. You got this thing. It matters. I remember growing up, you came into church and you seen men. You had admiration for him. Say, so you know what? I know when I get old, I got to straighten up. Now, you got some people coming out off, off the street. You can't tell the difference between the minister and the people outside. Lord, there should be a difference. Amen? Amen. Amen. Revelation 3, verses 5 and 6. Let's finish this lesson on a good note. Go ahead, brother. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So Jesus said that he is going to clothe us in what? In white raiment. God is without sin. My spiritual bodies. Gonna give you what? A white robe. That's the word of God. Say, go ahead. 
and I will not blot out his name Come on. out of the book of life. Come on. But I will confess his name. The Lord said he's going to confess all our names. Go ahead. Before my father, before the father, and before his angels. Come on. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Did you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church? Whether you are coming to church on the Sabbath day or cooking the feast, present your best. Amen? Amen. It is not present about presenting yourself to man. It is all about presenting yourself to God. Amen. And I thank you for your time. Amen. Amen. Now you will have your announcements. Amen. Let's give another hand for a fine lesson today. And I want to say shalom and happy Sabbath, everybody.